Hi everyone, Michelle Markey at Medina Domestic Arts with another short video, hopefully, about how to cut out any of these embroidered blocks that have been done, and I'm gonna hold this up here closely, with that sharp, um, dense satin stitch cutting line is what I call it, around each one of these. Because ultimately, the way I designed this quilt was to use each one of these as an applique type product. And we're gonna get into how to attach it to the quilt later, but I thought it was also very important for everyone to see how these are going to cut out. And, and I'm gonna to try to focus on this one. Um, this one will uh, take a little longer. As you can see, there's quite a bit of line work in here and you would just be watching me cut out and that's pretty boring. Um, but I do wanna focus on this one so that you can see how it is I go about doing this. And I'm going to pull over several different pairs of scissors so that you can get an idea of what it is I like to use. And the first pair of scissors that I'm gonna show you are these large curved embroidery scissors. I believe these are four inch embroidery scissors. And they're curved and they're very sharp. And I, these are some of my favorites. Um, the other one that I have are these very itty bitty bitty tiny um, curved embroidery. And this is for more of the detail work. So believe me, you would be using this scissor quite a lot with some of these smaller little things that you have to cut out because the goal here is to cut as close to the line as possible. And um, the other thing I will be showing you in, in another video is what you do when you have a tiny bit of white still showing. Well, actually, I'll tell you what you do. You take a black fabric marker or whatever color the stitching is because some of these in by the seas uh, patterns are actually done in different colors. In fact, I'm going to show you some of that real quick on some of the seashells. Um, we may have seen some of these earlier, but if you look at these, some of these are tan, like on these shells, and what you're going to wanna do, of course, is match to the shell itself. We're also gonna talk about what we do when there's an inside piece. And really, that boils down to coloring this background fabric in a similar color to whatever fabric you are attaching behind it because you wanna fool the eye into believing that this color that you see in these spots are in fact the same color as what you have as a background fabric. Um, but again, we'll, we'll discuss this in, in further detail. Really the main thing today is just to show you how to cut. And the other pair of scissors I have, I like them, but there's a caveat. Um, these are very sharp. These are made by Tooltron, which is actually here in the San Antonio area. They're great, but let me just say this. Um, even though they're applique scissors, these are kind of tight. Um, they, they're curved. Let me turn them around this way. So, you know, really what they're meant to be is if you're cutting along the edge, like if I had this flat and you wanted to go along this way. Occasionally, I will use this to actually cut a pattern out. But most of the time, um, these are best more for applique itself as it is lying flat rather than what we're going to do today. And I'll set these aside just in case I need to use them. But my two big scissors that I use to really get these nice and clean cut are these two. But the first thing you need to do is to actually cut it out away from the main pattern itself. Now, most of these patterns are going to be sold like this. They're going to have at least several different pieces to them. Back to the seashell again, let me just use that as a quick example of what it is I'm talking about. You will actually see that there's multiple um, shells on here. I'll move this around because I can't fit all on one screen, but you'll see there's multiple one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shells. So this would be known as the seashell block they're not set up in any order because they're meant to be cut out. Now, should anybody want something to be set up in an order where it was all lined up, we could talk about it, but this is my intent 
for how this quilt is going to be done. Okay, so without further ado, let me go ahead and show you what you should initially do. And that is just to cut this down so that it's a little bit more manageable. Be very careful as we come around that very close, tight place. And I just kind of like to cut everything so that it's small and easy to manage. Because believe me, you start trying to cut these big, and be careful, watch what you're doing, because I'm watching the, the video and I'm not watching where I'm cutting. But you should get as close as you can. Okay. Um, and a note about the stabilizer. On these particular ones that I'm doing, I actually have permanent stabilizer, but I've been going back and forth. And I'm, by the way, going to set this aside because we don't need that now. And we're going to focus on this one. Um, the stabilizer is fixed. It's a cutaway. Um, you know, I've gone back and forth about this. I'm using cutaway on this one because I'm going to make a smaller quilt and I might bling it out more. But for most of the other ones that are actually in the quilt, I use tearaway because it makes them lighter and it makes it easier to cut out. So I, I'm kind of leaning towards when I sell these blocks, what I will do is I will actually sell these with tearaway unless somebody wants differently should they want a lot more um, bling attached to it because bling needs the support of a, of a tight, tight uh, uh, stabilizer. Okay, without further ado, you can see me cutting this and I just try to get as close as possible. Now, I'm not gonna cut this entire thing out on video because that would be boring, but I want you to see how tightly I get this, okay? And you'll notice I get really darn close up to that. That's because this satin stitch, I do fairly tight, so it makes it real easy for the, the sewing cut edge to follow along there without actually having to cut into the thread itself. Um, when I first started doing this, I tried just using a bean stitch and that wasn't good enough. I cut into the bean stitch too often and I felt like most of my clients who would buy this would do the same thing. So I actually created a satin stitch for each one of the pieces that are used in Zen by the Sea and that's what you're going to get when you order this. Now, you know, again, Somebody wants something different, I'll work with them. But uh, the main thing is here is to cut away, and I'm sure you can see, very tight across the edge. And if you'll notice, okay, you do see some white, and I don't have a marker here, but I'm going to hold this up so that you can see this. What I would do with that marker is anywhere there is white, I would run it on along the inside edge and color those black so that you couldn't see it. I mean, you can try to go in and clean that up, and those of you who are very anal will probably do so, but I think you run the risk of starting to cut the threads when you get that close. But as you as you could see while I was cutting, it was very easy, gives, gives me a nice sharp edge, and again, after I finish cutting all this out, I'll go back in and I'll run my black fabric marker along the edge here so that it'll cut it very nice and cleanly. Now again, I'm going to not show you how I cut this whole thing out, but again, I wanna point out that this in here will be colored to match the fabric that I'm going to use. Uh, I typically do that with fabric markers. I might have to do it with paint if there's quite a bit of difference, but for most of these, it's kind of a navy bluish color, and I have a navy blue pen, so I come in here and color it, and you won't be able to tell the difference when you lay it on at least the fabric that I'm using from Moda. So that's it in a nutshell. Um, as always, you can contact me at medinadomarts at aol.com, M-E-D-I-N-A-D-O-M-A-R-T-S at aol.com with any questions. And I hope this helps. Thanks for watching. Bye.